Hi, this is Brandon from Precision Flight Controls. This demonstration will explain how to reset the visual monitors for your Linux-based computer. And so the first thing we'll do is take our mouse along the very left side here. There is what would appear to be a taskbar. On the very top left, if we click, it will open up another window with some applications. We'll click on this first one here that says Displays. And when you pops up here, you'll see that there are two monitors here. This may or may not be the case for you when you open this screen. What's important is that we select the monitor, which is to be our instructor operating station. In this case, it is the Samsung monitor here on the left. And we need to make sure that the resolution on that is set to 1920 by 1080. If you do have two monitors showing up here, like I do, what you'll need to do is click on the second one and verify that it is grayed out like this and that also down here on the bottom left side it says off. Once you've verified that we will click apply, keep this configuration and that will be the setup for the Linux display page. And We can go ahead and close this now. Now we'll go back up to the very top left and we will open up the NVIDIA X server settings program. And once that pops up, we will select the second tab from the top, which says X server display configuration. And give me just a moment to resize this here. And once we do that, we can now see that we have our instructor station displayed on the left here with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. And in this particular case, since I am using a five screen visual PC, we see five monitors which are showing up as disabled to the right of the instructor station. Now this may or may not be the case for your SIM. If you're using one of our newer systems, it likely uses two visual computers and you are most likely to see three screens here if it is for the front three. If it is the second visual computer, you may just see two drawing the side views. Okay, but that should not affect uh, how we set it up. So again, if you just have two monitors showing, you'll do uh, you'll follow the steps along until you've assigned the two monitors. If you have three, you'll continue along with me until we've assigned three. And of course, if you're using a five screen visual PC like I am, uh, this is exactly how you will set up your system. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do is click on the instructor station monitor and you'll see some information pop up below. What we need to verify is that under configuration, it says X screen zero. The instructor monitor must be set up as X screen zero. Uh, for most cases, this will already be the case and you will not have to change anything. And again, it is important that the resolution and this program as well for the instructor monitor is set to 1920 by 1080. Once we've verified those two items, we can click on the first monitor, which is displaying to the right of the instructor station. In this case, it's this Acer monitor here. And so I'll click on it. You can now see there's kind of a red or orange ring around the monitor. And that's just to let me know this is the monitor that we are currently changing the settings on. And again, below here, it says configuration. We need to click where it says disabled and select new X screen. You'll notice in parentheses there, it says requires X restart. We will do the restart once we've completed the rest of the configuration, it'll be the very last step that we do. So we can ignore that for now. So we'll click here where it says new X screen. And as you can see up top here, this has changed from kind of a grayed out uh, with the words disable on it. And now it says Acer 1920 by 1080. And if we come down here, we can see it says configuration X screen one, which is what we want. And so the next thing we need to do is to change the resolution. As you can see here, it says the resolution is set to auto. So we'll click where it says auto and from the list, select the resolution that is 1024 by 768. And then you can see in the graphical display up here that it has changed the size of that monitor to 1024 by 768. And so now what we need to do is move on to the next monitor. So we'll click on the very next Acer monitor and we will repeat the same steps that we did last time. We'll go to configuration, select new X screen, and we will need to also reset the resolution. Before we do that, I want to point out, if you look, it now appears that this monitor, the new X screen 2 that we have created, is showing up behind 
X screen number one, which is the Sacer monitor right here. I'll explain in just one moment how we fix that. So first, let's set the resolution to 1024 by 768. We've done that. And now we can see that that monitor has completely disappeared behind this monitor. So what we need to do is hold the left control button on your keyboard, go ahead and click on this monitor, and it will pop up with some different information below here. And there's a tab there that says selection. And it says X screen one, which as you can see is the one we have selected. From the selection list, I want you to go down and select where it says X screen two. And then on the bottom portion here, it says position, and that is set to right of. That is what we want that to say. We want that to be set to right of. And now we want X screen number two to be set to the right of X screen number one. As you can see in this current scenario, it's set up to X screen zero. So from the list, we will select X screen one. And now you can see that the visual monitor for the front right view is showing up to the right of the left view or X screen one. And that's exactly how it should work. You may or may not come across this problem as you reconfigure your visuals. If you don't, just continue along. If you do, you'll need to, like I said, uh, left control, click on the screen, and then set the position to the right of whichever the next monitor in line would be. So we'll move along to the next monitor. Configuration, just as before, we will set to new X screen. And again, like before, we will reset the resolution to 1024 by 768. And as you can see, that one has automatically populated itself in the correct position. 99% of the time, that is what will happen. And so we'll just continue moving along with the last two monitors. Configuration, new X screen, the resolution, once again, to 1024 by 768. And you can see now this one shows up in the correct spot. And again, you can guess it, we're going to do the exact same thing one more time. So X screen 5 resolution to 1024 by 768 and now you can see we have our instructor station on the left with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 it is X screen 0 and if we click starting with the monitor immediately to the right of the instructor screen we can see that it is configuration X screen 1 X screen 2 3 4 and 5 it is very important that that is the configuration that is laid out that it goes one, two, three, four, and five with the instructor screen being zero. In some cases, uh, if you use a non-enclosed cockpit sim or a three screen visual, you likely will not have a standalone instructor screen. You will be making one of your, you will have three screens and this one will actually act as the Linux desktop. It should be pretty straightforward. In that case, you will have X screen zero, one, and two. And if there's any question about that, you can just send an email to us and we'll get back to you. I'll provide all the information uh, for contacting us at the end of this video. And so again, we can see here, everything is now configured and set up correctly. This is exactly what it should look like for a five screen visual. If you had a two screen visual, you would just see two of these monitors here. And again, if it was a three, you would see three of these monitors here. And so now what we need to do is apply and save the configuration file. So we will come down here to the bottom of this window click apply, apply what is possible. And after we do that, we will go down again to the bottom, click where it says save to X configuration file. And this window will pop up. Now likely the file path will not be populated in yours. It will look more like this and it'll just be empty. And we will need to browse to that file path. Now we will click browse. On the left side over here, we will go down to where it says computer. Looking for this folder right here, which says ETC. We'll double click on that. In this folder, there is another folder that we're looking for that says X11. And we will enter the X11 folder. So you can see the path is we have computer, etc., X11. And what we're looking for in this folder is these files right here. On your sim, you will likely not see this one. You will see a bunch of backups like this. It will say xorg.conf. And then it will have a date. 
what I would like you to do is select the file with the uh, closest date to today's date and click Save. Now what we will need to do is go up here to this directory path and we just need to delete the date from the back as well as that final period so that the file name looks like that. We also need to uncheck where it says merge with existing file. So once you're all finished, this is what it should look like and we will click save. It will pop up asking you to enter a password. The password is N-O-N-E or the word none in all lowercase. We'll enter that and hit authenticate. It has now saved our NVIDIA X server settings. And so what we need to do now is close this window, take our mouse up to the very top right side here, click on the little gear or power icon, go down to where it says restart. And at this point we would click right here. It will restart the computer and providing that there is no other problems and that we have configured everything correctly, the visual computer will restart the sims should auto start providing that that is also set up on your computer and all of the five three or two screens should show up in the correct position with the correct views if you have any questions about this process or you need additional assistance we can be reached at 916-414-1316 or tech support at flypfc.com.